All right, so I will give you that the two equations that we talked about yesterday were how to find the nth term if it's arithmetic. So that was a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. That's only if it's arithmetic. So that's nth term of an arithmetic series. I know, I know. A single term in an arithmetic series. So like it didn't work with A1. It wouldn't have worked with that one where we were trying to figure out what the pattern is because those aren't necessarily arithmetic. Only if you're adding the same number to each term. That's arithmetic, right? That's to find this. So like when it says like, like, like number three, find the formula for A sub N, which was the nth term. That's what you would use. And then um, we talked about the summation. So the sum of a partial sum or of an arithmetic partial sum, which is n over 2 times first plus last. And again, that only works arithmetic. So it only works on the th series in which you're adding the same number to both, to each term. So this does not necessarily work on 8-1. It might work on some of 8-1 because some of 8-1 might have been arithmetic. We just didn't know how to test for it yet. So number one says to determine whether this sequence is arithmetic, and if it is, find the common difference. So if I'm going from 5 to 3 and 3 to 1 and 1 to negative 1 and negative 1 to negative 3, am I adding the same number? Technically, you're subtracting, so you're adding a negative number, but it is the same, right? So this is arithmetic, and the common difference, which we use d4, is negative 2. Number two said write the first five terms of the arithmetic sequence. So I'm starting with one with a <coughs> sub one, which is eight, and I'm adding three to it. So it'd be eight, then eight plus three is eleven, then eleven plus three is fourteen, fourteen plus three is seventeen, and seventeen plus three is twenty. And it said first five terms, so we always include the one that they gave us at the beginning, and then obviously there should be a set of five. Everybody still good? Yes? All right, then number three says use the information from number two to find the formula for a sub n for the arithmetic sequence and then find the sum of the first 25 terms of the sequence. Yep. Can we explain the I just add three, 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 three. Oh, okay. So for this, we need the two formulas we just said. a sub n would be a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And then we need the sum, which is n over 2 first plus last. So a sub 1 or a sub n would equal a sub 1 the first term in that sequence which is 8 plus d which is 3 times n minus 1 and then we just distribute 8 plus 3n minus 3 which is 5 plus 3n. So that is the formula for a sub n that's the first part. And then it says to find the sum of the first 25 terms of the sequence. So in order to find the sum, I need to know the number of terms in the sequence, I need to know the first, and I need to know the last. Do I know the number of terms in the sequence? 25. 25. Do I know the first term in the sequence? Yes. Which is? 8. Do I know the last term in the sequence? No. no. So I have to find the 25th term in this sequence, right? So I have to say a sub 25 would equal 5 plus 3 times 25, which is 5 plus 75, or 80. Now that's the last term in the sequence. Does that make sense? Yes. So you needed to know the first and the last. It gave you the first. You have to use the a sub n to get the last. So then I would do 25 over, 12, over 2, which is 12.5, times 88. which is 1,100. So I wanna stress that these can be done without a calculator, that's just kinda of to help you with your speed, but obviously I'll let you use that class set of, of um, four function. Yeah. What's the 25? Is it 25 or two? 25 is the number of terms in the sequence because it says the sum of the first 25 terms. So the N is the number of terms that we're trying to add together. Questions so far?
Okay, then comes number four, find the sum of the first 50 possible multiples of five. So I need n over two times first plus last. What, how many, how many multiples are we looking at? 50, right? First 50 positive multiples, that means 50 terms. What's the first? Five, and then the last would be 50 times five, which is 250. So I get 25 times 255. which is 6,375. And then the last one says find the partial sum. So partial sum is what we've been doing. This is still n over two times first plus last. That's what's a partial sum, okay? And this is different from what we did in section one because in section one, I would have taken one and plugged it in, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then 10. And then I would have added all those together, right? Which actually gets you the right answer. The idea is I don't want to be having to add in 10 numbers and then adding them together. So when you get a sum that is not arithmetic, which or geometric, because we're going to get to that today, then I would say like maybe you're going to plug in four terms or something like that. So it'd be like one, and then the top would be four, and it would not be arithmetic. So if it was like n squared, right, that's not arithmetic, that you would have to plug in and then add them together. But this is arithmetic, so we can use that partial sum theorem. So number of terms, if the bottom number, if I start at 1 and I stop at 10, how many terms is that? 10 terms. What's the first term? Or how do I find it, actually? Plug in 1. So A1 would be 2 times 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. And then plug in 10. 2 times 10 minus 3, 20 minus 3, which is 17. So I'd get 5 times 16, which is 90. It's 80. Just kidding. It's 80. Yeah, so if it started at zero, that means there's one more term. There would be 11. And if it was two, there's one less. Correct. Yep. One to the top number is the top number. If it's less than one, that means there's more terms. If it's greater than one, that means there's less terms. Yep. Are you going to give us, like, n is, like, seven or something like that? If I was to do seven to ten, it would be for the sum from eight one. Where we have to do it. Where you'd have to plug them in and add them. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could see zero. You could see two. Probably wouldn't go all the way seven, but you could do that, right? So if it said the same thing, 10 at the top, but n was zero, now there's 11 terms. So if it was, n. say again? 11 is n. Like 11 would be n, yep. And if it was two to 10, now there's one less term, so there, it would be nine terms. So one on the bottom means the number at the top is the number. If it's less than one, you have to add however many less than one it is. If it's greater than one, you have to subtract however many bigger than one it is. So if it was three to seven, I'd have to take off two numbers. If it's in, it usually so doesn't negative, negative. It negative. usually isn't negative, but it would be the yeah, so so negative. like technically what we're doing is doing the number at the top, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing the top number. Oops, a daisy. Top minus the bottom plus one. So if it's ten minus one, that's nine. I add the one on, I get that there's ten terms. If it was negative two in the bottom, I would do ten minus a negative two. That means there's twelve terms plus one, which is thirteen terms. So if, you, if you're confused, you can use that, but you can also just like, if it's one, it is what it is, and if it's less than one, you have to add however many less than one it is. If it's bigger than one, you have to subtract however many bigger than one it is. If there was a, a similar thing, what would have the negative 40? Yeah. So you'd yeah. have to do the same. One extra. One extra. Yeah. 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 Because one to 10 is not 10 minus, so that was the question. That What, what number was that that asked you? Oh, seven. seven. Yeah, seven. Because zero is across the number. Oh, okay. 
So, because it said, what was the, what was the, what's your question? Because you. Moses, some, all, I, I have it. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the. Of all integers from negative, negative 40 said, to 50. Yeah. Some of negative 40 to 50, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So, it's the difference plus one. Because think about how we do it here. 10 and 1 on the bottom is 10. It's the difference plus 1. Okay. So this would be the difference plus 1. Because if you think, like, how many numbers are between 1 and 10? There's 10 numbers between 1 and 10, right? But if I did 10 minus 1, it's 9. It's always one more. Yeah, that's what that that's why I just you put sixty when you start the answer. Oh my god, I'm right. It's one to sixty. Then it's sixty minus one, which is fifty nine. No, you what? No. Plus one. Top minus bottom. But then how did one to ten come? One to ten is ten. Ten minus one. One to sixty is sixty. No, I did sixty and it was wrong. I had to do sixty one. But then you didn't have one. To no, 60. I'm like 90% sure I did. Okay. Your second guessing yourself, don't try to count from negative 40 to 50. Count from 1 to 5 <laughs> and figure it out, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five terms there, right? But if I did 5 minus 1, there's only 4 in the difference. You always have to do one more, which is 5. I'm just doing the formula. Then N, I have to figure out which would be 50 minus a negative 40 plus one. Okay, but you had different numbers, right? Yeah. But it's that's the same. Not, I think that's where I was like 61. Yeah, it was that, it was like, it was like negative 20 to 40, and then I had to do 61. So it wasn't one to 60, like you said, 100% sure? I said I was, I'm almost uh -huh. sure. <laughs> I remember this. I remember seven times, those are the questions. Can you, can you give me what yours is? So the N, right? We know the first, we know the last. The n is 50 minus a negative 20 plus 1. So this becomes 70 plus 1. This is 71 over 2 times negative 20 plus 50. That's how you have to do it. So when your count starts at 1, then the last number is the last number. That is n. But if your count is not 1, you have to adjust it. So difference plus 1. <coughs> what? Why did you just tell us this formula before? I feel like you should add it to the power of words. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some things you can use your brain to figure out all by yourself. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I had to do is figure out what D is, right? Because this would be, I got to do the, the sum N over 2 times first plus last. So the number is 15. The first is 5.1. I don't know the last. To get the last, I gotta figure out what a sub n is and then make it a sub 15. So a sub n would be n, or a sub one, which is five plus one, plus whatever d is and you're subtracting 0.4 here, right? So this would be a negative 0 0.4 times n minus one. So I get 5.1 minus 0 0.4 times n minus 1. And it didn't ask for the equation, so you don't even have to distribute that out. If you did distribute it out, it's fine too. But really what I need to do is find out what 15 is. So 5.1 minus 0 0.4 times 15 minus 1. 5.1 minus 0 0.4 times 14. 0.4 times 14 is 5.6. 5.1 minus 5. Uh, fifth, oh, yeah, yeah, it's n minus 1. So then it should have been that. You're welcome. So we went from general sequence and series, which was anything in any kind of pattern, to arithmetic, which is just adding the same number to each term, to geometric today. So geometric is multiplying the same term times each term. So a sequence is geometric when the ratio of the consecutive numbers are the same. So in the sequence A1, A2, A3, A4 to AN, it's geometric if there's a number R such that you can divide 2 by 1, 3 by 2, 4 by 3 and get the same number, meaning you are multiplying the same term each time. That term has a name called the common ratio and the variable we use to represent it is R. 
So common difference is arithmetic, that's D. Common ratio, that's geometric, and that's R. So this first example just says to determine whether or not the sequence is geometric. So I'm looking to see if I can multiply 3 by something to get 12, 12 by something to get 48, and 192 divided by 48, the same terms, right? So 4 is what it would take here, 4 is what it would take here, and 4 is what it would take here. So this is arithmetic, and R is 4. So instead of, like you have to divide, divide this by this, divide this by this, divide this by this, and if they are all the same number, then it's yes. If they are not, then it's no. So if I look at B, 1 half divided by 1 would be 1 half. 1 third divided by 1 half, which would be 1 third times 2, would be 2 thirds. Are those the same? No. So this is not arithmetic. I'm sorry, not geometric. Question on that one. Okay, this one says write the first five terms of the geometric sequence. So now you're given the first term and you're given r. You're just going to keep multiplying times r. So the first one is 1. Then you would do 1 times 1 half. That's 1 half. Then I would do 1 half times 1 half. That's 1 fourth. Then I would do 1 fourth times 1 half. That's 1 eighth. And 1 eighth times 1 half. That's 1 sixteenth. I want five terms. The first one is 1. So 1, 1 half. 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth. And again, they go in the order you get them in, not necessarily in sequential order and not in, in value order, but in the order in which you get them in. Still good? Easy stuff, right? All right, now we've got the formula for the nth term of geometric. So remember, nth term of arithmetic is the other one we know. So we're going to know two of these. If it's arithmetic, it's a1 plus d times n minus 1. If it's geometric, it's a1 times, which should make sense because it's multiplication, <coughs> times r to the n minus 1. So in this case, you'll plug in a number for a1, you'll plug in a number for r, your exponent will stay n minus 1. E says write, write the first five terms of the geometric sequence, then find the common ratio, and then write the nth term of the sequence as a function of n. So this is not only geometric, but it's also recursive, right? So recursive is the one where you need the one before it. So if my first term is 9, then a sub 2 is 2 times what comes before it, which is 9, and that's 18. a sub 3 is 2 times the one that comes before it, which is 18, and that's 36. a 4, 2 times 36, which is 72. And a 5, 2 times 72, which is 144. So the first five terms in the sequence would be 9, 18, 36, 72, and 144. That's the first part. Second part says find the common ratio. So what would I divide when I divide 18 by 9, 36 by 18, 72 by 36, and 144 by 72? What do I get? 2. So R is 2. Then using A sub N equals A sub 1, R to the N minus 1, find the nth term of the sequence. So A sub N would equal the first term, which is 9, times r, which is 2, to the n minus 1. 
So now be careful here because what happens is if you're plugging in, people multiply these two together first to get 18 and then raise it to the power. That's wrong. The only thing that has that power on it is the 2. So we would first plug in for n, raise 2 to that power, then multiply it times 9. Okay? That n minus 2 is just on the 2. This one says, find a formula for the nth term of the geometric sequence, then find the indicated term of the sequence. So I want the seventh term, which means once I figure out the equation, I'm going to go back and find a7. But before I get there, i got to figure out a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1. I've got to figure out what a sub 1 is. Do I have that? Yes. It's what? 3. Three. And I need r, which I don't have, but can you find it? Yes. How? 36 divided by 3, and then 432 divided by 36, those would both be? 12. That's my nth term, right? Now I need the seventh term. So 3 times 12 to the 7 minus 1. And again, do not multiply the 3 and the 12 first and then raise it to the 6. You're raising the 12 to the 6 and then multiplying it times the third. So I get 8,957,952. So if it didn't say first find the formula for the nth term, then I could have totally just taken 432 multiplied by 12, got a number. Multiplied by 12 again, got a number. Multiplied by 12 again, multiplied by 12 again until I got the seventh term, right? That would have gotten me the same answer. The difference is the bigger that number is, the longer you're going to spend doing that, first of all. Second of all, this actually asks for the nth term first. So you're going to find the formula anyways. You might as well use it to not have to do that. <laughs> Exponent is not there. Yeah. So before we get to test, if I'm going to do that four function calculator, I have to figure out if I get a class set by then. If I'm going to do that, I'll let you practice with the four function calculator. But there is no exponent. So I probably wouldn't do something to the sixth, but you can, yeah. When you get to probability, you're gonna see you're gonna need that kind of stuff too. Okay, example five, find the indicated term of the geometric sequence. So this is giving me a sub one, and it's giving me a four, and it wants the 10th term. So these are a little tricky until you understand it, and then they're super easy, but I'm gonna teach you how to understand it, okay? If you think about what we would normally do before this point, let's say I had a <coughs> sub one, what, let's go back to the last one, it was a n equals three times 12 to the n minus one. Let's just say I use that one, right? And let's say I wanna use, I wanna find the second term. This would be a two equals three times 12 2 minus 1, and this becomes a2 equals 3 times 12 to the first. You with me so far? If I wanted to find the second term, that's how I could do it. If I wanted to find the third term from the beginning, I would get 3 times 12, 3 minus 1, 3 times 12 to the second equals a to the third. Notice that every time... I want a next term, my exponent is increasing by one. You with me? So the rule is that if I wanted to find a to the third, I would get a sub one times r to the second. If I wanted a four, it would be a four times one, t equal, sorry, a one times r to the third. So what's the pattern you see happening between this number and the sum of these two. They're always the same, right? The number of the base that you're trying to find is equal to the sum of the base and the exponent on the other side. That will never change. Which means if I wanted to find a sub 10, 
and I had A1, what's going to be the exponent on the R? 9. Nine. What happens if I don't have A1, I have A2? Eight. It's got to be 8. So you can jump from term to term as long as the base on the left equals the base plus the exponent on the right, which is what's going to happen in a case like this because I go from the first term to the fourth term. So I put the bigger one on the left because this is how I'm going to find R. I'm going to say A to the fourth equals the smaller one, A1 on the right, times R, what's going to have to be the exponent on the R? To the three. So A to the fourth is one half. A to the first is negative four. R to the third. And I don't know R. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative four. which is the same thing as multiplying by negative one-fourth. And I get negative one-eighth equals r to the third. How do I solve for r? Cube. cube root it. So r would equal the cube root of negative one over the cube root of eight, which is negative one-half. Now I can find a sub n because I have a sub 1 times r, which I now know is negative 1 half to the n minus 1. And then I can find the 10th term by saying a sub 10 equals negative 4 to the negative 1 times negative 1 half to the 10 minus 1. So I get negative four, negative one half to the ninth. So this is where it comes in tricky when I give you a calculator because I don't want you to figure out what 0.5 to the one ninth is. I want you to keep it exact in terms of a fraction. So I'm gonna do two to the ninth and keep it in the denominator. I'd get negative four times, this is negative because it's odd, one over 512. And then four goes into 512 128 times. So this is 1 over 128. So my opinion, it's the hardest when they jump if you don't understand the pattern. But if you get it, it's not so bad. If I had done this, because I could have also gone from A to the 4th to the 10th term by saying A sub 10 equals a sub 4 times r. Now what would have to be the exponent on the 4? I mean on the r. 6. So I could have done it that way as well. I just would have been plugging in the 1 half here. The negative 1 half to the 6, I would have gotten the same answer. So you can start with the initial one. If it's asking for a sub n and you want the equation, then you're always using a1. But if you're just finding terms in the sequence, you can jump terms in the sequence as long as your exponent allows you to make up for it. Wait, for the 8 times equal to 84, r to the 6, isn't the equation a1 r then it's n minus 1 on top, so then it's 9? It was 9. This is 9. If you start with a1. If you don't start with a1, so I started with a4. If I start with a4, then this variable has to, the exponent has to make up the jump. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So if I did a1 and I want to go to 10, it's a1 and 9. But if I don't start at a1, as long as the base and the exponent add up to 10, I can jump. You don't always have to start at a1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, especially if you're not actually paying attention. Uh, no, I'm not saying you're not. Don't get, don't get defensive. All right, six. Find the indicated term of the geometric sequence. Now look at my terms. I'm going from second to fifth, not first to something, right? So if I want to go from second to fifth, I'm going to put the five on the left. A to the fifth would equal A to the second times R to what power? Third. Base and exponent have to add up to the other side, yes? Now I'll plug in what you've got. So a to the fifth is 2 thirds. a to the second is negative 18. I don't know the r. What would you do? Divide by negative 18. 
which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 18. Negative 1 over 27 equals r to the third. Cube root r is negative 1 third. Now I've got options here. I don't have to plug it in because it didn't say find the nth term. If it said find the nth term, then I would have said a sub n equals a sub 1 times r. To the n minus 1, I'd have to figure out what a1 is, so I'd have to work backwards from the negative 18 and then plug in the r and the n. I mean, in a sub 1. But this time it just says six terms, so what's one way I could get there? Use a5. Just use a5 and r1. multiply it times r. Because I only need to go one more jump, right? It's the same thing as setting up your equation a, if I wanted 6, it'd be a5 times r to the first. So same exact process. All right, now we've got some, and there's actually two summations within geometric sequence, finite and infinite. The first one is finite. So to find the sum of a finite, meaning it starts and it stops, geometric sequence, so notice this is now geometric, the last one was arithmetic, this is geometric, with a common ratio not equal to 1, because obviously it would never change then. Then I do a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So this notation is just your normal summation okay so it's 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r times a sub 1 so I'm going to write that again the sum of a geometric finite is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r so now it's the Fourth, right? Yeah, fourth formula we've got to know. Thank you for sharing. May we have it like the day before, like when we write no. it down? No. All right, so sum comes from here, right? This is my summation symbol. What is a sub 1? 32. Okay, that's this number. What is R? Nope, r. One fourth. r is the one that's being raised to the power. r is one fourth. Number of terms, six. Bottom number's one, top number six, right? We start, stop. You with me so far? Yeah, now we plug it in. 32 times one minus one fourth to the sixth power over one minus one fourth. And again, this is the risk of the calculator because I don't want that as 0.25 to the 6th power. I want it kept as a fraction. So 4 to the 6th is 4,096. Can I leave fractions within the fractions? No, so I gotta combine my numerator, my denominator, and then keep change, flip it, right? So this would be 4,096 over 4,096, and this is four over four. So I get 32 times 4,095 over 4,096 over 3 fourths. I'm gonna keep change, flip, the four thirds, or the three fourths becomes four thirds. 4,096 divided by four is 1,024. 4,095 divided by three is 1,365. Is it as simplified as it can get? Nope, I want to see if 32 can go into 
1,024, and it does 32 times. You could use scientific as long as it is not probability. So you cannot use a summation button, which, because obviously, could do that entire thing, right? That's if he's got, yeah, that's fine. How are we going to do like the crazy stuff? We'll just have to like. Like everything that I just did, I did with a calculator that you could use on Thursday's quiz. Because sometimes we're going to need the calculator on that specific decimal. That's why I'm saying be careful how you type that in. I'm not going to type this in. I'm going to do it in bits and pieces. I'm going to do four to the six keep it in the denominator and then continue. That's what that's the risk of the calculator is I don't want this answer in decimal form. This is going to be kept exact fraction form. So you got to be really careful. Does that make sense? It's the risk of giving you a calculator is you forget like and you just type it all in. That's not what I want you to do. It makes it less exact. There's one more. The good news is this is the easiest of all of them. Which is nuts because it's an infinite sum, which sounds like how can you possibly find the sum of something that doesn't end, but somebody fit out. Oh wait, not this one, sorry, there's one more after this. So the summation notation to write the sum. First of all, you have to look at this and say, is this geometric? It is, right? 14 divided by seven is two, 28 divided by 14 is two, yes? yes. So it is geometric. So I know I can use my sum of my geometric which is A1 times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Here's the tricky part. I can't just say last minus first plus one in here, right? Because these are not in sequential order. They're not consecutive numbers. There's gaps happening here, okay? I have to figure out, I know AN. I mean, sorry, I know A1, I know AN, but I don't know the number of terms right? I know R would be 2, but I don't know the number of terms. So do you want to sit here and multiply times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 until you get to 896? I know. That's why standardized tests love these questions because they can be done. They just eat up your time if you don't know what, how to do them efficiently, right? They're time killers. How else do we think we could find that? So let's say this is the last term. Let's say this is the first term. Let's say R is two, because I do know that, right? What I don't know is N minus one. Does that make sense? Yes. So how do I do this? 896 divided by seven, 128. Then what? So you can make this super complicated. You could LN or E both sides of this equation. Or you could just try to figure out what power of 2, 128 is. Does that make sense? Oh. So I could do that by going, this is 2 and 64, 2 and 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. How many 2s is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 2 to the 7th equals 2 to the n minus 1, which means 7 equals n minus 1, and n is 8. eight. <coughs> now I have all the pieces I need. There's 8 terms, yep, in this. You could have multiplied, yeah. So I get a sub 1, which is 7, times 1 minus 2 to the 8th over 1 minus 2. One, 7 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th would be 128 times 2. Or, right? Yeah. 256. 1 minus 2. Negative 255 over negative 1. 255. Can you distribute the seven or just leave the Yep, no, multiply. This number was nice and it wasn't fractional like the other one. It was just, would you say that we had the U on the 
Not exactly like that, no. I, haven't, I actually haven't. I have to take your quiz and make sure that what it is is what it is, and then we'll discuss it tomorrow. Because I think I know what I want to do. I just have a rough draft. Group quiz? Huh? No. Questions on that one? Okay, now we get to the easy part. Third. Yeah, if it was next week, I would try to push it, but it's like two weeks early. I don't think that's fair. Ready for the easy part? Yeah. Again, infinite geometric se sequence. So all you have to do is take a sub 1 and put it over 1 minus r. This only works if r is a fraction. Has to be in between 0 and 1. The reason this works is if you think about a fraction, the higher the exponent is, the smaller the fraction is, right? So like it gets teenier and teenier and teenier and teenier in the back end, infinite amount of times it balances out the front end. That's why this works. So you can only find an infinite series if r is a fraction under one. So it can't be like three halves, okay? Because that would be bigger than one. It has to be in between zero and one. It could be a decimal, it could be 0.5. It just has to be between zero and one. And ignoring the sign, so that, that's why it says absolute value. But it's just a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So a, a sub 1 over 1 minus r if r is a fraction in between 0 and 1. Is r a fraction in between 0 and 1? Yes. yes. What's a sub 1? 5. 1 minus, what's r? Negative 1 half. This becomes plus 5 over 3 halves. <coughs> Keep, change, flip. And it's 10 thirds. And you will keep that the way that it is. I don't want that to be a rounded number, OK? You can write it as 3 and 1 third. That's fine, too. But you don't even need to go to the next step. You just need to keep it as a simplified fraction. So wait, is it between negative 1? has to be the absolute value of it has to be between 0 and 1. Yeah, so it can be negative. It just has to be a fraction between 0 and 1. Questions on that one? Is that the last one? No. Oh, okay. So the other thing that will come up is if you saw something that said this. And everybody freaks out. What's missing? A1 would be 1, yes? So the number that's being raised to the power is the R, no matter what. If there is nothing there on the A sub 1, then A sub 1 is 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, geometric sequence.